This is how I believe the timeline went down. Okay. All right. I believe Mark Stoops was contacted. And, and when I say I believe, let me be clear about this. I don't believe. I'm pretty certain about all this. There are one or two things, and I'll say what they are, that I can't say for sure, but everything else. And you can believe me or not. I don't care. <laughs> okay? I really don't. I'm not going to try to convince you. I, one of the things I've found insane is all of our fans believing the narrative of a school that you don't even know those people, right? True. And, 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 and people will say, well, Matt, you're friends with, with Mark and Vince. You have an incentive to block. Well, what do you think about them? I mean, they have the same incentive. If you don't trust me, why do you trust them? They have the same incentive. They have the same connections. That's exactly that right. Tex Ag site is, along with KSR, it's like the second biggest site in the country, right? So they're respectable. Of course. I'm not saying... I, I'm not criticizing anything they say, but the idea that you just believe that, well, they have the same connections to Texas A&M that we do at Kentucky. The yes. only difference is they put out a narrative early, and, and I went to bed, <laughs> right? But, but here's what I think, well, what I am certain. Okay. okay. Mark Stoops was contacted last week about the job. I think he did have some interest in listening to it. I don't think it's the first time that's happened, um, but this one may be more than any of the others. Why that is, I think only Mark would know. But my guess is it's a great job at a place with the biggest NIL in the country. I don't know if people realize that, Ryan. A&M's got the biggest NIL in the country. Yeah. So for a guy who had said pony up, <laughs> that's a there place, people there that can pony that's up. A place where they pony up, right? Um, <laughs> and I think they, they, they wanted him. And I think they were uh, expressed that they were down to, let's say, three people, and he was one of them. I think on Thursday night and Friday, they honed in on, on Mark. And he basically said, I'm not doing, I got a game tomorrow. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it till after the game. Okay? Yeah. Because they wanted to beat Louisville, which sure. they did. Absolutely. <laughs> right? And then I think on Saturday, he was, he, after the game, he was offered the job. And then it became a question of, does he take it or not? I, and people will believe whatever they want on this. Again, that's up to you. I do not think, I, I, he did not take the job. He did not accept the job. I think the job was offered to him in a, we got to get final approval tomorrow morning. And are you serious enough about this that we'll go ask? And I think he communicated that he was serious, but he didn't accept it. And then they couldn't give him the formal offer until the meeting the next morning. Okay? Sun Sunday morning. Sunday remember. morning. Gotcha. So there's this sa Saturday night period where I'm sure A&M, because remember, it's their side that floats Mark Stoops' name. True. I, I didn't hear. I mean, I read the game day stuff, but really it was when it at like 8.30 when it was said Mark Stoops is likely the next A&M coach. That came from A&M people. It did. Right. So all of a sudden, I read that just like everybody else, and I go, oh, whoa. Yeah. So that was when I was like, you know what? All right, we got to find out what's going on. You know, I was planning on going to Louisville Saturday night. I said, well, let's not do that. Uh, I think then Saturday night, there were a lot of conversations that Mark had with people about, okay, should I go? I think that was one set of conversations. And then if I go, who would go with me? Yeah. Right? So as well, far as coaches? Yeah, I think coaches is, is the big one. But if I were to go, who would go with me? Now, you got to put yourself in the in the view of those coaches. Like, this is all all of a sudden falling on them. Uh -huh. Right? Do I want to pick up and move and go from Lexington, Kentucky to College Station? It's a big difference. Isn't it? After a couple of them just got married, just had babies. A couple I mean. of them, just, one guy just got here. Yeah. Right? Am I going to pick up and go down to College Station a completely different place than this? And a lot of those people are going through the process of trying to figure that out. Yeah. I got the sense, this is just my sense, that not everybody was certain to do that. Okay? Okay. Then I think there's a Kentucky side where the leadership at Kentucky is scrambling. They have to be ready. Just they have case. to decide, first of all. We want Mark here. Yeah. We want to communicate that we want him here. But then we also have to think about what if he what if he doesn't? We gotta be ready. We gotta be ready. Uh -huh. What are we gonna do? 
And so I think from 8.30 to midnight on Saturday, all of these conversations are happening. Yeah. Mark's talking to people. The assistants are talking to people. The administration is talking to people. And there are coaches from other schools going, oh, you're telling me Brad White, Liam Cohen, Vince Merrow? You're telling me those guys might become available? Hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's call them, too. Uh And I think all this is going on. And there's a restaurant in Lexington where a lot of these people are. (laughs) Right? Yeah. And so all this is happening, and I'm sitting there kind of watching some of it. In real time. And I'm getting calls from people all oh, from, yeah. from A&M people and from SEC people. And everybody's just trying to figure out what goes on. Now, the reaction from A&M fans is negative towards Stoops, right? Right. The reaction is negative. I think they think they should get somebody bigger. We'll talk later about the fact I think they ended up with a dude that's just like Mark but with less success so far. Yeah. I don't know why they're as ex- I don't know. I don't understand the thought process that they were angry about Mark, but they're excited about the Duke coach. I don't get that. I mean, the Duke coach lost to Louisville twenty-three to nothing. We beat him. He just beat Louisville. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, that's their coach. He might do a great job. I have no idea. So somewhere through that period of time, I'm assuming, to be honest with you, Ryan, I'm assuming he's leaving. A lot of my conversations and talks are about what's next. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Like, what's next? Because I think there was a move to try to have a Kentucky coach quickly because of the portal. Right, you have to. There's a big worry of, will we lose all these guys? Mm -hmm. Because I think, and I know you know this, a lot of players are on their phones going, what? Yeah. Now what? That's right. Right? Yep. Because I, I can say definitively, if Mark left, and especially if Vince left, we'd have lost a ton of kids. We might have lost everybody we like. Yep. If Mark and Vince left, we may have lost every single person we wanted. On it would have been a total rebuild. It would have been, you would have had to start from scratch. Yep. And for all the people talking about names that could have come in, you would have had to start from scratch. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. So that's part of it. And all this is going on. I think the administration had meetings ready for the next day. Yeah, they had to. Because they had to. Uh huh. Right? And then. I get a text message right after midnight that's saying, basically, Mark's going to stay. I was very hesitant. Okay, so let's let's go back to when Mark was hired. Do you remember yeah, this? That's right. I got a text message Mark was going to be the guy, and I said, is this good enough for me to put out? Yeah, you were a little and hesitant. He said yes, and I put it out. If you remember, there was an hour where I was the only guy with it uh-huh. out there. Yeah. And this was not the same. Like, nobody knew who... Like, Nationally, people didn't know who I was back then. Locally, they did, but not nationally. And I felt like I was I don't floating know. in the wind. Yep, I remember that. Because no one confirmed it. And I just, I, there was like an hour. I was pacing, and I was with Lachlan and Terry Miners and Drew Diener. And they were all like, man, I hope you're right. Because <laughs> I'm just, and then Bruce Feldman later, like an hour later, confirmed. It took a while. It took a while. So before I'm going to, now remember, all the A&M people are saying, He's coming. He's coming. And I feel good that he's not. But I'm sitting there going, do I do I hit send? Uh-huh. And I did. That's and then I night. just, at 12.10, 12.15, yeah. something like that. And then three or four minutes later, the A&M guy who broke the story that he was coming flipped and said, Matt's right, he's not. And so then I felt better. And then soon after, Pete Thamel said, sources tell ESPN, I know you're my ESPN colleague, Pete, but that's lame as it can be. <laughs> that dude. Anyway, and, it, and, and then Mark puts out the tweet at 1 a.m. But I think there was, a, there was a three-hour period where the fans didn't just feel that way. I think the people around UK, staff, administration, everybody was in the same spot. Yeah. They were kind of falling along with the fans. And Mark was trying to figure out what to do. Now, why did he not go? That's the big question. I think this is my take. My take. Your take. Two things I think happened at the exact same time. I think Mark realized that there might have been a couple people he really wanted to go with him that weren't going to go. Or at least weren't certain to go. Uh Uh-huh. Couldn't commit to him. Couldn't commit. 
in that moment. Yeah. Couldn't commit by the next morning when he might get the official offer. Because uh -huh. I think A&M had communicated, we're going one way or the other tomorrow. And I think there were some people who were not ready necessarily to up in their lives on a dime and go without a little thought. And then I think, this I can't speak to because I'm not there, there's some A&M stuff. I do not, and people can disagree with this, and I don't care. I do not think the message board Twitter thing had anything to do with it. Could the next day A&M have pulled the offer? Yeah, I guess. I'm not there. I don't know. But I don't think that ultimately is why I didn't. I think ultimately he didn't do it because he wasn't certain he wanted to go anyway. And then he realized the band might not all go with him. Yeah. And the money was probably going to be about the same. And he decided to stay. Now, what's the final thing in his head? He's probably the only one that can answer that question. Right? But... Then you look on the A&M side, apparently there were some folks there who were chained, who the, on the board that were maybe going to raise a fuss. And in the end, I think both sides parted ways and realized the, it wouldn't be the way to go. So that's, that's what happened. And I'm, I'm confident about that. I, let me ask you some questions. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. Okay. And then you play the role of fan asking okay. questions. Yeah. All right, because I want... I want to answer as many of them as I can. Some of them I 